when you think of Glee, you think of these really happy people and you're like who could do no harm really, just like, uh, singing and dancing. And then when you think of that, you're kind of like, wow, the earth is, is, is kind of twisted in some ways. And Monty's character was expected to play a major role in upcoming episodes. There's no word yet from Fox on how the show will address the loss of one of its biggest stars. For CBS This Morning, Carter Evans, Los Angeles. So tragic, you know. Such a sad story. And friends had said that they had talked to him that day and that week and that he seemed fine. Very, very. I'm proud of him and I love him and I miss him. And to be angry is pointless. He's dead. <laughs> Rivera was immensely popular on social media, boasting millions of followers across Twitter and Instagram. Just one week ago, the actress shared a tweet that now seems prophetic. Make the most of today and every day you are given. Tomorrow is not promised. The world's most wanted woman is tonight behind bars. The ex-girlfriend of pedophile Jeffrey Epstein has been charged with a number of sex crimes. Ghislaine Maxwell was tracked down by the FBI in a luxury hideaway. The breakthrough arrest ramping up pressure on Prince Andrew to speak to police. In March, she posted this haunting video showing her underwater in a bathtub. Gravity keeps pulling me under, but the urge to breathe helps me stay afloat, she wrote. The apparent drowning of the 33-year-old actress is the latest tragedy to hit the Glee cast. In 2013, Corey Monty, the boyfriend of Glee star Leah Michelle, died from an accidental overdose of heroin and alcohol. In 2018, Mark Sally committed suicide just before he was scheduled to be sentenced for possession of child pornography. If I die young. Now another Glee star, apparently gone too soon. For someone so well connected, Maxwell has been very elusive in recent months. In years past, she was a high rolling socialite, friends with the rich, famous and powerful. Maxwell was a regularly photographed fixture on the Manhattan party circuit, but always enigmatic, often seen, rarely heard. Ghislaine was introduced by her father to the richest and most powerful men in the world. Maxwell, arrested last week at this million-dollar home in a rural part of New Hampshire, is a longtime associate of Jeffrey Epstein, who died by suicide last August. He was awaiting trial on federal sex trafficking charges. Many of his alleged victims have long said Maxwell was a key accomplice, luring girls to him. Well, that bit I can't help you with because I've no idea. The Queen has had to deal with many royal scandals as the tabloids call them but this actually eclipses all of them now this newly surfaced photo from 2002 shows maxwell sitting on the throne at buckingham palace with actor kevin spacey the tour of the palace reportedly set up by prince andrew himself drew phrase claims that maxwell and epstein trafficked her to prince andrew three times starting when she was 17 encounters the prince denied in this interview with the bbc i have no recollection of ever meeting this lady Ghislaine maxwell was the ninth and reportedly favorite child of robert maxwell the disgraced british media mogul who died in mysterious circumstances in 1991. his body was found floating near the yacht he named after her. I'm proud of him and I love him and I miss him. Maxwell now behind bars, just across the East River from the Manhattan jail cell where Epstein was found dead more than a year ago. He was awaiting trial on federal charges accused of sexually abusing dozens of underage girls. His suicide sparking harsh criticism of the facility he was in. We are now learning of serious irregularities at this facility that are deeply concerning and demand a thorough investigation. The guards on duty the night Epstein died were supposed to check on Epstein every 30 minutes, but did not in the hours before he was discovered. Those guards now awaiting trial on charges of falsifying records and conspiracy. The mystery of Ghislaine Maxwell is unraveling.
Excuse me, Schuster. Before we cast another pointless vote in a meaningless contest that has absolutely no practical ramifications whatsoever. Rivera is best known for her role as Santana, the sassy cheerleader in the musical comedy Glee that aired on Fox from 2009 until 2015. Rivera's disappearance comes after the deaths of two other cast members. Police say the 33-year-old actress and singer rented a pontoon boat at the lake's reservoir around 1 p.m. When a boater found four-year-old Josie asleep in a life vest, his mother, 33-year-old actress Naya Rivera, nowhere in sight. Security camera footage from the dock shows Rivera and her son renting a pontoon boat earlier in the afternoon. They were the only two on board. The 33-year-old made her mark on the hit TV show Glee as the sharp-tongued Santana. And if you ever tell anyone this, I'll deny it. But I like being in Glee Club. It's the best part of my day, okay? Sadly, Rivera's disappearance isn't the first tragedy to rock the Glee family. And Mark Sailing, who Rivera dated, killed himself in 2018. And now to the search for answers tonight after the death of actor Corey Monteith. Just a small town girl. Seven years ago, lead star Corey Monteith died from an accidental drug overdose shortly before Glee's fifth season. His character, Finn Hudson's death, written into a future episode dedicated to his life. In 2018, another cast member. When you have the information that an adult life jacket was left on board, that that pontoon boat wasn't anchored, what does that lead you to believe? It's hard to draw conclusions with just that. You know, it's like I wish that, that we had a means of like, you know, really understanding what happened. We're going to go to that in a couple of minutes, but Danny had a real Holly weird experience. Jess, I've got to tell you, it's one of the strangest nights I've ever had of my career. As of the 1980s, Corey Feldman starred in movie classics like Stand By Me, The Goonies and The Lost Boys, pairing up for that one with the late Corey Haim. But behind the scenes, there was a sordid and shocking secret. For years now, Corey Feldman has been speaking out about the abuse that he and Corey Haim suffered by what he describes as a ring of pedophiles made up of powerful Hollywood executives. I went to the Corey Feldman premiere last night of his documentary to tell all my truth, the rape of two Corys. And you know, Corey came on California Live last week. He told us he was going to expose the people he claims sexually abused him and his best friend, actor Corey Haim, who yeah. died tragically 10 years ago. And he was going to stream this movie around the world for everyone to see. The movie theater at the Directors Guild was filled with his friends, celebrities, people who were there to support him. And then right a big in the crowd, a big, a big, a big turnout. crowd, and then right in the middle of the movie it was so bizarre he stops the documentary just before he's going to name the alleged abusers that I know. must have just caused chaos it was weird and he announces that the film is not streaming around the world so is that so he did tell you why he stopped it then yeah he said okay. it was a technical glitch it was so strange but okay. he stopped it for like 10 minutes and everyone did he, he was, go back to it did he, I mean, did he did eventually after everyone encouraged him to keep going uh -huh. And um, Corey decided to play the rest of the movie. But for 10 minutes, he just talked about how he was hacked and how he's not, people are not streaming this around right. the world. And he was up because he was, he was upset because he wanted the world to get out, the word to get out right. to the world. And the world wasn't watching as we did. But the show went on. He played the movie. He did name the names. He did. He did name the names. I don't feel comfortable releasing them okay. because we haven't been able to reach sure. out to anybody uh, for a response to what he was saying. And, you know, here at California Live, it's our responsibility to give you guys accurate information yeah. um, with what's going on. But I have to tell you, it was just... It was a bizarre, <laughs> a bizarre night. And again, Jess, our biggest responsibility is our viewers. Yeah. And we love you. We want to give you guys the right information. To, of course. Yeah. So, Absolutely. um, but here is what he did say last okay. night. All right. <laughs> Um, it's a mixed bag of emotions right now. Uh, there's there's a great victory here in the fact that we actually got to show it to the people here. But I was told that we went under attack during the film, during the streaming, and the world hasn't gotten to see it. So I don't know where we're at. I don't know how many people got to see it, how many people didn't. And that there was a ring of at least six people who all had various positions within the entertainment industry. So. I never said anything about powerful executives. That's something that got blown out of proportion. But the bottom line is, they, they're, they're at all levels. 
And just like any of the other uh, situations where you see profound amounts of child abuse within institutions, whether it be the church, whether it be uh, within sports, you know, whether it be within the acting community, it doesn't really matter. There, it's in all facets of life, anywhere where there's kids, if there's schools, if there's religious sects, wherever it is, there, there's going to be abuse of children. And it's about whether we're acknowledging that abuse and doing something about it, or whether we're turning the other way. Mm. And right now is a time of reckoning on this planet where all of us must stand together for the sake of our children and start to recognize that this is a reality, this is what's going on, and it's time to expose it, acknowledge it. I, I've been told that some people got to see half the movie, some people didn't get to see any of the movie. I don't know what happened. We have a lot of investigating to do and we're hoping that everything gets ironed out in time for the 12 o'clock stream. But we do know for a fact that it wasn't on our end and that it happened because we were hacked. Yeah. You may have been hacked, but this is still 2020. There's social media. People know the names that you have named. How do you feel knowing it's out there right now? Oh boy, <laughs> um, it's scary, it's scary, but I have faith. I have faith that other victims will come forward. That's what matters most right now is other victims, please come forward, let your voices be known. Corey, you mentioned earlier one of the most evil things about pedophiles is often they choose broken kids to start with, uh, and that makes it even more horrific. In regards to your documentary, you say that the K2 issue in Hollywood is actually worse than Me Too, and often these situations involve cover-ups at the highest level. Is that going to be exposed in your documentary as well? Well, uh, there's only so far that I'm going to go in my documentary as far as, uh, you know, highest level cover-ups and stuff like that. God knows there's always going to be another level up, right? I mean, we've learned that through history on, on many things.